have learned that in interrogative sentences like it is a good day, isn't it? It is a good day is a statement and isn't it is the question tag. Now let us revise quickly what are question tags. Question tags are short questions that are placed at the end of sentences. They are mainly used in speech when we want to confirm whether something is true or not or to encourage a reply from the person being spoken to. Now question tags can be positive or negative and are inversely related to statements. Now if we have a statement as close the door, what will be the appropriate question tag? Now let us look at the statement first. Close the door. Now this is an imperative statement. So we know that the subject is you. So what will be the appropriate question tag? Now in this statement, close is the main verb. There is no auxiliary verb here. So will the question tag be close the door, don't you? Does that sound correct? No, this is not the correct formation of the sentence. We will say, close the door, will you? Now, this is an exceptional use of the question tag, which does not follow the normal rules of formation. So, we see that question tags help to transform an imperative sentence to an interrogative sentence. So when we have the sentence as close the door will you, you will notice that close the door is the positive imperative and will you is the positive question tag. So in this case, the imperative and the question tag are not inversely related. Now we can also say close the door would you. So we see that will or would is used with imperatives to form question tags. Now if we say close the door won't you, now that would also be a correct construction but in this case won't you shows a polite request. So now in the third sentence here close the door won't you, we have used a negative question tag. So we see that with imperatives we can use both negative as well as positive question tags. Now when we say to somebody, have some more cake, will you? This is another exceptional use of the question tag. When we have, have as the main verb in an imperative. We see in this case also, they are not inversely related. Don't stop singing, will you? Now this is an example of a negative imperative. Don't stop singing. And with this we have used the question tag, will you? Let's play tennis, shall we? Now in this sentence, let's play tennis is a positive imperative. Shall we is the positive question tag used with it. So this is an exceptional case. And you must remember that whenever we have let's, we always use shall. But if we have a sentence as, let me go to play tennis, where we have used let to ask for permission. In that case, we can form the question tags in various ways as we do with imperatives. We can use will, would or won't. So we can say, let me go to play tennis, will you? Or we can say, let me go to play tennis, would you? Or let me go to play tennis, won't you? So remember that when we have let and let's in the sentence, don't get confused. Look at the usage of the word and then decide which question tag you will use. This is your pen, isn't it? That is your pen, isn't it? Now in the sentences here, this and that are the subjects. 
But are we saying this is your pen, isn't this? That is your pen, isn't that? No, we are not saying that. Why aren't we saying that? In both the sentences, this and that is referring to your pen. So we use the appropriate pronoun which refers to your pen, which is it in the question tag. Similarly, in sentences like those are your books, aren't they? These are your books, aren't they? We use they as the subject because both those and these are referring to your books. So we use they as the appropriate pronoun in the question tag. There is a lot of work to do today, isn't there? Now in this sentence, our statement starts with there and is followed by a form of the be verb. So whenever we have a construction like this, our question tag formation is a little different. Let us see. There is a lot of work to do today, isn't there? Now we know that is is the verb here. So our formation of isn't is as usual. But instead of a pronoun in the question tag, we have used there, which is an adverb. So this is an exceptional case. Be careful of the formation. I am late, aren't I? Now this kind of construction is difficult to understand and is different. Let us see. Now when I say I am late, you might think that our question tag should be am and I? But is there any construction called am and I? No, this is not correct. When I say aren't I, I actually mean am I not. So remember that this kind of construction is different. Now let us do this exercise. Fill in the blank with an appropriate question tag. I am clever. We have used am here. Can I say I am clever? Am and I? No. What will we say? I am clever. Aren't I? Nobody has come yet. Have they? Now, this is another exceptional formation where we see that when the subject is nobody, we use they in the question tag. So, if we have a sentence as somebody has complained, what will be our question tag? It will be somebody has complained, haven't they? So, we see that when the subject is somebody, earlier we have seen that when the subject is Nobody. Similarly, when the subject is somebody, we use they in the question tag. Nothing makes him happy, does it? When the subject is nothing, we are referring to a thing. So we use it in the question tag. Everything is clear now, isn't it? When the subject is everything, we use it in the Question tag. You must remember that when we use nobody, everybody, somebody as subjects, we are referring to people. So we use they in the question tag. When we refer to nothing, something, everything, we are not referring to living beings but to things. So we use it in the question tag. She hardly speaks, does she? Now in this sentence, she hardly speaks is a positive statement and along with the positive statement, we have used a positive question tag, does she? So this is another exceptional use where they are not inversely related. Statements having words that are negative in sense like hardly, rarely, seldom, scarcely or barely are followed by positive question tags. Remember this rule when you form appropriate question tags. I think she is enjoying herself, isn't she? Now this sentence starts with I think. But our subject is she. And she is enjoying herself is the main statement. And 
we have followed the same rules that we have learnt earlier in forming the question tag, isn't she? So we see that statements that have introductory phrases like I suppose, I think or I hope do not affect the formation of the question tags. Let us do this exercise now. Fill in the blank with an appropriate question tag. I barely know you. What will be our appropriate question tag here? I barely is showing us a negative sense in the sentence. I barely know you. So our question tag will be, do I? So today we have learned some exceptional uses of question tags. If you find these confusing, all you have to do is practice hard. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests, performance analysis with actionable feedback, personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So learning at Delta Step is not just fun and easy, it is also rewarding. So register for free now.